Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. In developed countries, if you want to be rich, you become an entrepreneur or what you call a businessman or woman. But in Nigeria, if you want to be rich, find your way into government or do jobs with government. That's why we now have contract bazaar for foreign companies. The most foreign companies doing jobs with our government in Nigeria, aided by ministries, departments and agencies, and even the Bureau of Public Procurement, observes our statutory proc procurement procedures in breach is an understatement. Otherwise, how do you explain the fact that companies that were tried and convicted abroad for procurement breach in Nigeria are still the favorite bidders here? Our knack for everything foreign, you would say. Same way it is easier for the camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a fresh graduate to find a job in Nigeria. Examples, you must be 23 years old with four years working experience despite a suit strike. It's the same way indigenous companies are finding it difficult getting big jobs in Nigeria as it has become a fertile ground for Chinese and other foreign companies. Even when indigenous companies get through the bidding processes, the Bureau of Public Procurement, BPP, will substitute these indigenous companies with foreign ones. There are even allegations that some contractors are calling for the probe of the Director General of the BPP, Maman Amadou, and the activities of BPP on the modalities for awarding certificates of no objection on most government contracts. Even the NDDC recent probe further exposed all these allegations. Some have even alleged that the DG of BPP, in some cases, intentionally disqualify some companies to give an edge to some foreign companies or companies from the northern part of the country. No wonder there are a lot of allegations of sectionalism and nepotism against President Buhari as some of his appointees and aides are also not happy matters. And the earlier he does something about it, the better. Some indigenous contractors are recently contemplating boycotting bidding for government contracts to avoid the attendant loss of their little earnings as the cost of purchasing some of these billing documents also does not come cheap. Who does this thing, Seth? Contracts as simple as road constructions are intentionally awarded to cronies without compliance with the Bureau of Public Procurement Act. For example, also, Nigerian Port Authority has intentionally, since 2015, refused to award major contracts to indigenous companies on the ground that they have not done major jobs with government before. Despite the fact that the foreign companies executing these jobs were indicted in their own countries for bribing the same MPA officials here to want to grow Nigeria. I bet tell me something else. Even jobs as easy as wreck removal or what you call underwater rubble clearing that can be executed by any underwater weather is, uh, is awarded to foreign companies despite training as militants in underwater welding. How then do we intend to create jobs for our teaming youths, especially given the COVID-19 financial loss, when government refused to patronize indigenous companies? How do we expect our locals to compete when we intentionally disqualify them from getting local jobs? The militants we are training on the water wedding abroad, where do we intend them to get jobs from? If we give away jobs meant for them to foreign companies, yet we do not see the correlation bef between this attitude and youth restiveness, breeding insecurity. It's even alleged in some quarters that this happened because it is easier for these foreign companies to launder funds for our officials, as the provisions of the Nigeria Investment Promotion Act allow them to take out their profits 100%, despite not bringing a Kobo into the country to invest. And like I always do, 
I would therefore advocate that government should not only make laws to encourage local participation, but there should be concerted effort from the administration to look into the procedure of awarding certificate of no objection to most of these foreign companies by the Bureau of Public Procurement and ensure that our local companies are encouraged to create wealth by giving them jobs that will enable them to compete, not only locally, but within West African sub-region. That way, government will not just be creating jobs, but will also be recycling wealth. Just like David had said, we need a bigger pie. Mind you, I'm not saying don't award jobs to foreign companies. But the ones Nigerian companies can do well, give them a right of first refusal. And sub jobs are many, so many of them. And ensure that such jobs are equitably distributed as qualified companies and not just domiciled in one section of the country only. And I will not rest until we collectively learn to make Nigeria first in everything that we do. Wow. I mean, there are very simple moves that this country is losing out on. If you, want, um, if you don't want to drive away foreign investment, which is very useful, but at the same time, you don't want to make it look like everything's for the foreigners. Um, there are ways you could do it, tax incentives and all that for companies. So if you feel Nigerians can't do a particular task, but they can do parts of it under an, a foreign company, then let the foreign companies come in, but give them tax incentives to employ Nigerians in certain parts of the job mm -hmm. so that it is not by force that you're telling them to give it to Nigerians uh, because they will run away anyway eventually and then you lose out. So it's a case of this balance. We're not ready to balance. We're not ready to balance with the overseas people and as liberals have said, even within Nigeria, it's all sectionalized. All the jobs appear to be going to one side of the country since we had uh, a president from 2015. And um, so whether we're in or out, it looks like there's no difference. I, th I think it's multifaceted, the problem from what he's saying, because on the one hand, when he started doing the advocacy, I was saying to myself, is it really true? again, that the reason it's going to foreign companies is because of that bias or because those foreign companies would deliver, like Judas Berger, for example. Most people would opt for them because we know how some of our contractors behave. I know the stress I'm going through one of the banks. If I name them now, they should really hide in shame. For three days, we've had downtime. They haven't bothered to send you even a, any information to say what. So the service delivery is very poor here. Sorry to be down on us. So why would I go and... So, the, so there are companies that you would opt for just because they have a, a name that you can stand by. But there's the nepotism, so that's another aspect. You know, I like your idea where you're saying, even if the foreign company is preferred to do it, then employ because you need to transition us into the job. We Correct. can't forever be recipients yes. of you know, other people's, and they are making money. You look at the Chinese using sense to say they must use their own people, they must use their, can't we negotiate? Why must we be negotiating like we don't have our best interests at heart? But the nepotism because one, how, we don't. how do we plug, they don't, it's just themselves. How do we plug the gap? I'm thinking that anybody who gives a contract out to their neighbor or their brother or their cousin, and that brother doesn't deliver, they should put down a kind of surety for that person. They'll come after you if that road develops portals. Because why should you be able to say, I'm giving contracts out, and that's where your own job ends, and then we'll deal with whatever, undelivered contracts, poorly delivered contracts. There must be some accountability. I totally agree. So what, I, what you said, uh, Kine, imagine Chinese companies fixing lifts and doing different um, infrastructure building and everything is written in Chinese. So even when they go, you still have to call them back to do repairs. Mm -hmm. When even a simple uh, nail and hammer job, they would bring Chinese people to do it. It's so ridiculous. So what um, you're saying, what Trika said, you know, bringing the capacity if we don't have it, but even, even empowering us, even we can learn yeah. under your tutelage to, to get those same skills. And part of the contracts, especially the billion and trillion dollar ones, should uh, make sure that they pass on skills and training to our own um, um, Nigerian people exactly. so that we can we can gain from that. After all, we're paying for this. We, we also need to um, transfer um, technology and skills. Yeah. So for sure, you know, all the documents um, Labour's talked about um, to get a simple job, get um, get um, PENCOM, uh, ITF, whatnot, cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, of Naira, sorry. And it's very expensive. And in the end, you may not even get the job. Okay. And so you spent so, all this money trying to get paperwork, and, and you don't have this job. So what's the sense in it? You know, and of course, there's no, you already know who you're going to award the contract to in the first instance. And so all that is a charade. Yeah, because quickly, so that I, I can um, just a few 30 seconds to, you, you find out that most of these companies, it, you caught Julius Berger, for example. So I didn't want to mention names. Julius Berger had been here. Unlike India, when telecom got to India, they said, look, 20% will allow you to bring it. The rest you would 
do here. So we can transfer technology and people will learn these things and then the open cottage industry. We've had Julius Berger for eternity. We can't even boast of empowering, you know, an indigenous company to begin to compete. Meanwhile, where they are coming from. Technically, Julius Berger is not a And that's I read anymore. that as well. Do, uh, any, 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 any okay, more, but we have but, to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. But we, ha we can't say we have empowered, yeah. you know, transfer technology to indigenous one to be able to compete and bring in the kind of equipment that they bring. Meanwhile, where they are coming from, their countries are empowering, you know, other locals. Anyway, this is a topic for, we'll continue the discussion. Whereas some may be open to offer from the highest bidder, we are ever open to the opinion you have to tender. No backhand fees required. Idris Hamza says, it is sad to know that all we can do is advocate and more advocacy. That never leads us anywhere. Talking is what we do best in Nigeria, where the criminal leaders have their way. Even when we have a group of persons sacrificing to initiate the revolution for a change that we all yearn for, programs like the Advocate are quick to technically overanalyze the process of the initiative and how it would have been done better, as if there is a university accepted, universally accepted method of initiating a revolution that will galvanize Nigeria against these wicked, heartless, and unrepentant thieves that have stole their way into power. How long are we going to endure these successive failure le failed leaders? How long should we continue to talk and advocate? Idris, so you are frustrated. Does that mean we should cease discussion? Like David said, we offer solution alongside our analysis. Thank you for your feedback, feedback though. We, we can't, this is like, for me, this is like a bigger university where you can lecture as many people as you can. Ignorance also is a big problem here. Melissa Bondex has this to say. You guys are doing well. So much love from Midland, Texas. Love you all, but Ekene is my sweetheart. Oh, really? I'm your sweetheart too, you should know that. And MS Continental says, good job, guys. A great narrator you are. My guy's sitting in the middle. Oh, that should be me. Yeah. A great guy, great guy. You see, I have, I have, a, have, some, fans. I have some fans too. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. Thanks, Miss Continental. When all is said and done, we all speak as one man or one woman as we advocate towards a better society. Advocate with us on our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, just simply go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Up next, Rookie is set to straighten out a system rigged against women. Right behind you, Rookie. Yay, I'm here.